Well, hey, you guys. Okay, fill in the blank with me. I know I've made it with money when I can buy. Now, obviously, there's not a magic shift where you make a certain purchase and then realize, oh, I'm financially secure forever. But lately, I've heard a lot of people, especially my millennials out there, say that their ultimate financial goal is homeownership. While this isn't an end-all, be-all kind of thing, but investing in real estate is a fantastic goal to work towards because the beauty of buying a home is that 99% of the time, that investment will appreciate over time and its value will grow. But there are always exceptions to this rule, which is why I want to offer you a little gentle warning. You know, just pretend that I'm dressed in yellow and have a little caution sign, you know, I'm just like, listen, just a little caution here. So let's talk about how to avoid losing money when it comes to buying a home. But first, I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page about when is the right time to actually save for and eventually purchase a home. So once you are out of debt and you have a fully funded emergency fund, three to six months of expenses, that's when you wanna look at actually buying a home. And after that point, you're gonna save up for your down payment, which is baby step 3B. And so you wanna do this uh, during that time because if you have tons of payments, if you have no money saved and you go and buy a home, it's gonna cause so much stress in your life. So you wanna be in a good spot financially, which may take some time, but I'm telling you, people that enter home ownership with no debt and savings and a good down payment, it looks a whole lot different than people living paycheck to paycheck and they go buy a home. And before I explain how to avoid losing money from home ownership, I wanna share a few reminders about saving for a down payment for those of you who might be in that stage right now. So once you are in step 3B, again, you're saving for that down payment, then I recommend setting a goal to save for your down payment in about two years. So if you're in a big city or a really competitive market, that may seem unrealistic. But the point is, I don't want you to spend 10 years sitting here waiting for your to buy a house, like whether it's your expectations are too high or even the market, which I know is really expensive, but I want you to get into the game as soon as you can responsibly and let the market grow the value of your home over time. And then you can use that equity to go and upgrade homes later. So your first home may not be your dream home, probably won't be. Number two, another thing to keep in mind is that your down payment fund should be in addition to your emergency fund. So don't use your emergency fund as your down payment. You want that separate, and then you're gonna save for the down payment. And of course, number three, the amount you need to save for really depends on the market and your city, what kind of home you're interested in buying. You know, even if you're single or married, dual income, kids or no kids. So in a perfect world, putting 20% down would be amazing because you can avoid PMI. Also, if you're a first time buyer, then five, 10%, I think is great, but just be aware, you will have a monthly PMI fee. Number four, your down payment amount should also depend on how high of a monthly payment you can handle in your budget. So ideally, all of your housing costs will be no more than 25% of your take-home pay. And by this point, you know after doing the math, like what kind of home you could afford. And the truth is, most people eventually make it to home ownership one way or the other, okay? So again, it may not be your dream home. Maybe it's a town home for a season. But what many people don't consider is how much money they're gonna lose by not going into the home buying process when they're ready because they're waiting on the markets. But here's the deal. If you financially are ready, go ahead and get in. The secret to making sure that you're not losing money when it comes to real estate is choosing a 15-year mortgage versus a 30-year. And some people are like, this is crazy. So listen, you're an adult. You can do what you want, but you want to look at the math because some people say, well, I'll do a 30-year, but act like it's a 15-year. And that doesn't always happen. And 30 years is obviously the most common choice, but 15 years puts you in a pattern of getting out of debt faster. So let's just look at the numbers though. Let's say you buy your first home for $300,000. You save $30,000, closing costs are in your down payment, so you're gonna put 10% down. Now you owe 270,000 on your home, which is paid for by the bank and they give you the mortgage. So right now, interest rates are six to 7%. So over the course of 30 years, if you don't refinance and you keep that percentage, then you would have paid $614,372 on a $270,000 loan. So over half of that $600,000 would be just an interest, AKA you're giving the bank almost $350,000 above the sale price of your home. On the other hand, if you did a 15 year, then you'd pay $423,258 total on the original $270,000 loan, meaning that you'd get $190,000 back and your 15 years sooner debt-free, which is amazing. 
So you could spend significantly more money if you stretch out the mortgage and the timeline of your home. And that is how you can actually lose money in home ownership. Now, some of you again are thinking, well, shoot, I have a 30-year mortgage. I didn't realize I was wasting that much money. Listen, take a breath, you're okay. First and foremost, interest rates, they are constantly fluctuating and we are in an election year. So listen, if you don't have a great interest rate, if you got up in the high, you know, the six, 7% and rates drop, then you can always refinance, okay? So remember that. Also, if it's not a good time to refinance, then set a goal to make one extra payment every quarter and make sure that you only make that payment towards the principal, not the interest on your loan. But slowly, and surely over time, it shaves off a lot of time off your loan when you do that. And remember, it's never too late to turn your money habits around. Everybody has made financial mistakes in the past, but you can keep learning and growing and do what's better for you and your money. And if you've been thinking about buying a home, but you're not quite sure about your budget, then watch the video linked below to figure out how much home you can actually afford. And be sure to check out the mortgage calculator at whimsysolutions.com. And remember you guys to take control of your money and create a life you love.